Good afternoon, John and Julie. Good afternoon, professors. Who are all these people? These are 100 students at the university. They are going to help us. How will they help us? They are going to be in our comparisons. We will make small and big comparisons today. We will use the comparisons as examples. We are going to teach you why health researchers must make big enough comparisons. Otherwise, what they find can be by chance. We will use the same treatments as last week, juice and water. But first, we will make three comparisons with only ten runners. First, we make the groups. Then we give the treatments to the students. And then the students run. Then we measure what happened. So, what out of five students in group A got stomach pain? I wonder who got the real juice. More people in group B had pain. First, we make the groups. Then we give the treatments to the students. And then the students run. Then we measure what happened. This time, one out of five students in group A got stomach pain. And one out of five students in group B got stomach pain. There was no difference this time. First, we make the groups. Then we give the treatments to the students. And then the students run. Then we measure what happened. This time, three out of five students in group A got stomach pain. And one out of five students in group B got stomach pain. So, what do you think of these findings, John and Julie? We found something different every time. The first time, more of the runners in group B got stomach pain. The second time, the same number of runners in each group got stomach pain. And the third time, more of those in group A got stomach pain. Did we do something wrong? Were the comparisons unfair? They were fair, but they were too small. We have to make bigger, fair comparisons. Now, we will make three comparisons with 100 runners. First, we make the groups. Then, we give the treatments to the students. And then the students run. Then we measure what happened. This time, 18 out of 50 students in group A got stomach pain. And 11 out of 50 students in group B got stomach pain. This time, there were many runners who got stomach pain. First, we make the groups. Then, we give the treatments to the students. And then the students run. Then we measure what happened. This was the last comparison. This time, 22 out of 50 students in Group A got stomach pain. And 9 out of 50 students in Group B got stomach pain. We found almost the same thing every time when they were 100 students. It was the runners in Group A who drank the juice. So, when the comparisons were small, you found something different each time. But when they were big, about 10 more runners out of 50 who drank juice got stomach pain compared to those who drank water. The more times that you find the same thing, the more sure you can be that it was because of the treatments. And it was not by chance. And to find something many times, health researchers must make fair comparison with many people. Exactly. Exactly.
the fair comparisons must be big enough. So, big enough fair comparisons are a good basis for claims about treatment? Yes! Claims that are based on big enough fair comparisons are reliable. So, remember, health researchers must compare, be fair, and make their comparisons big enough. Exactly! Thank, Thank you, professors! Be more sure. 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 Be more sure.